Who the fuck are you? Who the fuck are you? Summer is someone that John Dutton meets and has a sort of fling with. It turns out that Beth actually doesn't like it. I'm the bitch about to stab you in the stomach. I'm sorry, I didn't know he was married. She's so scary as Beth Dutton. To me, it's really funny because I know Kelly in real life. Here's a situation I couldn't have dreamed up in a month of Sundays. She's so protective of John, and she does see Summer as someone who's sort of an enemy because she doesn't think Summer sees or appreciates or understands at all what this world is or who he is. I'll get dressed. I have nothing to lose, you know? Summer's with John, and Beth can go fuck herself. Can I get another one? That's Thanks. It's so hard for Beth to sort of sit in that dining room chair. And suddenly she's having breakfast with her, and, you know, Beth can be cruel and can be mean. I mean, Beth needs to go to therapy. I mean, <laughs> really, figure that out. You'll eat the wheat grass, but you won't eat the seed. Our bodies aren't designed to digest it. Who told you that? Doctors. My doctor never told me that. Well, you should get a new doctor. You should get tested for chlamydia, you fucking hippie. It's really fun to kind of poke that bear. I hope you find a therapist who can help you. I hope you die of ass cancer. You do not want to be on the wrong side of Beth. If she considers you an enemy to her father or her or anyone she loves, she'll destroy you. What I love about that scene at the fence is it's the first time that Summer sees ranching for what it really is. Let's just cut it, then we'll patch it. How kind of majestic and careful they are with the animals and the landscape. Understand us a little better now? I think I understand you less, and you love this. You meet people along the way, and they can change you, they can inform you. And if I get tired, I'll just flag down one of your cowboys. I understand that much about you guys. Well, then you understand enough. It gives Summer kind of a new perspective. You see them kind of move into uh, their own space. Casey? They decide to just strike it out on their own. So they have this nice middle ground that's their own spot that is neither Yellowstone Ranch or the reservation, you know, and they're trying to sort of put down their own roots. This is it. Yeah, I think so too. That's so needed for them, away from all the influences. Go check out the barn. Before you check out the house? Always. Hello. Casey gets called to the res. Uh, there's been some horses stolen. Roll sound, please. Let's go, guys. Here we go. Roll them up. I need to talk with the family when they get home, get some descriptions on those horses. They're home. They're just hiding. White man with a badge has that effect out here. And lo and behold, the house that he goes to uh, is where Avery lives. Hey. Hey. I think some of the mystery is solved as to, like, where, what happened to Avery? Where'd she go? What's going on with her? You never know how people are going to take the work that you do. So I was so excited by the way that the audience responded to Avery's character. I'm just happy to, you know, bring her back. Whenever someone goes away and comes back, it's always like, a, 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 they're always very welcome. Here, I thought you were just a cowboy. You ready, baby? Monica's not super happy about the way that uh, Avery seems to treat Casey. Pretty good looking wrangler. Monica gets a little jelly. I'm on tight, baby. Oh, yeah? Tall, thin, long black hair, brown eyes. Yep, I'm on your type. It's really the first time that you've seen this side of her, which is just so much fun to play, honestly. And Taylor's just written these. Um, it's a little bit of comic relief, I guess, in, in, this, um, in this very dark world. Why can't you sleep? Because I'm thinking about your little bitch in the tank top. Take that boy and show him how to saddle a horse. Come on, kid. It was really cool working with Forrick because he had experience on the ranch. Horn, pommel, skirt, seat, 
Reagan. He brings Lloyd some joy. Horn, pommel, skirt, seat. Reagan. Very good. What's great about the consistency of what Taylor writes for these characters that do come on to be cowboys is he has to work. He's not quite the crushed soul that Jimmy was when, when he came. He's more of an innocent, open slate. I told her I was sorry. Seems like she didn't like the way you said it. Take your own advice. Seems to me they don't like the way you said it either. I didn't say sorry. A little fart. Part of Lloyd's angst with the situation is seeing the change, and that bothers him. Being a musician and being on the road, I remember when he came in and was going to do it, and everybody's just kind of sitting around, like, waiting for it. And I'm like, man, this is, if you've ever seen an acoustic guitar explode, it's not a pretty sight, and it's loud, and there's a lot of flying pieces, you know? We knew he was going to smash the guitar, and our back was kind of to him, but I didn't think he was going to smash it like he smashed it, and it almost made me jump and fall out of my chair. Pieces were flying and hitting everybody in the head. Everyone after that, people started hiding under the table before he came in there and grabbed the guitar. <laughs> I've seen a 1,000 of you in prison. Gosh, he stabs me, you know? <laughs> what the fuck, Lloyd? Lloyd kind of loses his mind a little bit. Special effects days are great days because they look so real, so I'm just tripping out as I watched Ryan with a knife coming out of his chest, and we're all like, that's awesome. Fuck, boy! I mean, it, it's hard to see. Like, you kind of have to remind yourself that it's not real. Whoa! Fucking barrel razors. They had this prosthetic kind of piece that they glued onto me with the knife sticking in it, with a hose running up over my back, and it would pump the blood out when they pulled the knife out. That was damn sure intense. It's just another Monday. Before it gets out of hand and someone gets killed, the way to handle the, the issue is to always just go into the arena and fight it out. That's a cowboy thing. It keeps things level. The shit ends here. You just got to get in the ring, you know? A little blood and dust. And then damn sure it gets sorted out. Let's dance, Brett. I wasn't even really seeing Ryan Bingham. I was seeing Walker. We're both professional enough at our jobs that we know that this is Walker and Lloyd, and then we go outside and it's Forey and Ryan. And action! Anytime you've kind of got to just have that level of energy, mentally and physically, it definitely make for long days. J-Rod and Jordan Warwick and Ryan Happy and all the guys up there doing the stunts, you know, we had plenty of help and uh, it was coordinated very well. I mean, these guys are professionals up on top of it. I really enjoyed those scenes, too. Not only just getting to play them out, but just kind of seeing how that, that all comes together. So, yeah, that was a, that was a big day. Fucking, fucking, fuck! fuck. Well, those two really don't like each other. Taylor wrote it beautifully. He does a great job being able to do full kind of circle with John Dutton, Walker, Rip, Lloyd. Just to protect you from yourself. You understand me? Ah, oh, fuck! And then at the very end, you shake hands and you move on. So we understand each other? Yes, sir. Yes, sir.